In this video, we'll talk about cancer metastasis. So what is cancer metastasis? The development of a secondary tumor in a part of the body that is distant from the original primary tumor is known as metastasis. So imagine you have a tumor in this part, particular portion of the body. From this portion, another tumor forms at a distant location in the body. And this phenomenon is known as cancer metastasis. It is metastasis which is making cancer so difficult to treat. Imagine you treat your cancer which happened in the hand, but before even treatment it can spread into different portions of your body. So even if treatment works for one region, there would be secondary spread in other regions. So cancer cells can dislodge from one particular location and travel through the blood vessels or lymphatics and reach another location to colonize that place. So there are different classifications of cancer metastasis. There is primary metastasis and there is secondary metastasis. Secondary metastasis means after primary metastasis, cancer cells move into another location again, which makes the thing even more complicated. So let's talk about the stages of cancer metastasis. So cancer metastasis begins with the cellular process of epithelial to mesenchymal transition. Epithelial cells are fixed on a basal membrane and it doesn't move all around the body. In contrast, the mesenchymal cells can dislodge from the basal lamina and can move throughout the uh, different regions of the body. So the epithelial to mesenchymal transition is the first step of metastasis. Then there would be invasion where the mesenchymal cells would invade through the extracellular matrix and it would undergo a process known as intraversation. So it would get through uh, the blood vessel and enter the blood vessel, either blood vessel or also lymphatics as well. Then it circulates through the lymphatics and it extraversation occurs just like a neutrophil or any immune cell and it populate a new location and it forms a colony. So the probability of colonization and successful extraversation is very low. But even after that, metastasis happens. So people are not really clear about the entire mechanism, but let us talk about the mechanism in a bit more details. So, but before I should tell you that uh, most of the carcinomas spread via lymphatics, whereas most of the sarcomas spread hematogeneously through the blood vessels. Now, if we talk about organs that are affected by these metastatic processes, the first thing that gets affected is the lymph node. And next, liver and lung are the most common sites for metastasis. In fact, 50% of the brain tumors are actually result of metastasis. Okay, let's talk about molecular mechanisms of metastasis. In order to understand molecular mechanism, we have to first understand what is epithelial to mesenchymal transition. So this is an epithelial cell and these in yellow, the epithelial cell has specific characteristics. They have cell to cell adherence and tight junctions. They have hemidesmosomes which connect them to the basement. They have epicobasal polarity that means their apical side and the basal side are quite different from each other based on molecular marker expression. Now all these features are disrupted in a mesenchymal cell. So epithelial characters are now abolished and new characters are acquired a cell which is undergoing EMT. So one of the hallmark features of EMT is loss of cell adhesion, loss of epicobasal polarity, cleavage and invasion of the basal lamina, and ultimately gaining of a migratory capacity. One can understand these better with molecular signatures. For example, there are distinct epithelial molecular signatures such as epithelial cadherin, cytokeratin, ZO1 which is, a which is a tight junction marker, laminin, etc. Whereas the mesenchymal cell upregulates vimentin, N-cadherin, fibronectin and proteins like snail, sludge, alpha SMA, etc. 
so epithelial and mesenchymal transition is not an uh, uncommon process when it comes to human body because during that nervous system development the neural crest cells undergoes emt and this is completely normal during the formation of mesoderm there is also epithelial to mesenchymal transition in fact wound healing process requires this kind of transition as well so this is not a harmful process as such but when it happens in context of cancer this could be quite detrimental so let's talk about the factors that are involved in emt it turns out there are molecular factors and transcription factors like zeb1 twist and snell which are highly involved in the process of epithelial to mesenchymal transition experiments has shown that if you ectopically express these transcription factors to any epithelia they undergo this transformation into mesenchyme in cancer cells it has been shown that many cases these transcription factors are upregulated or mutations of these transcription factors are often associated with cancer so all of these factors modulate adherence junctions and tight junctions integrity it also modulate actin regulators we can which can allow the ch change in cell shape also it triggers cytoskeletal rearrangement another important thing that we are going to discuss in details is the matrix metalloproteinases these matrix metalloproteinases can act on the extracellular matrix and dissolve the extracellular matrix which would make the detachment more easy there are several signaling pathways which converge into these particular transcription factor generation so there are signaling pathways like wnt beta catenin signaling pathway there are signaling pathways like receptor tyrosine kinase jak stat tgf beta or even not signaling pathway all of these are implicated in terms of uh, cancer metastasis and one of the common theme of all these pathway is that they upregulate zeb1 twist and snell so all these things lead to the epithelial to mesenchymal transition now the matrix metalloproteinases or mmps are key factor that helps in metastasis once secreted by the cell they can break the extracellular matrix which would make it easier for a mesenchymal cell to invade now let's talk about and summarize the determinants of metastasis so most important determinant is the external signal that could be growth factor chemokine cytokine etc so the cell adhesion cell cell adhesion and cell uh, basement adhesion are very important for uh, metastasis adhesions are generally dissolved during the metastatic procedure second met matrix metalloproteinases are the key factor which can dissolve or modify the extracellular matrix then there are additional factors such as genetic mutations which make it more susceptible or make it more likely that a cell would metastasize and ultimately these days it has been shown that epigenetic modifications could be also a leading cause for cancer metastasis so i hope in this video you got some idea about cancer metastasis you can get more notes and flashcards in my facebook and instagram page you can support our channel using super thanks see you in next video